ومن مصر إلى الصين حيث يستمر قطاع الذكاء الاصطناعي في الصين بالنمو بسرعة إذ حقق مكاسب قوية في النصف الأول من هذا العام وشهدت الشركات التي تصنع الوحدات البصرية أوبتيكال موديل المستخدمة في نقل البيانات ومعالجتها زيادة كبيرة في الإيرادات بأكثر من 70% بالنصف الأول من هذا العام مقارنة بالفترة نفسها من العام الماضي وشهدت شركات مراكز البيانات والاتصالات زيادة في الإيرادات بأكثر من 20% في المئة أيضا بالنصف الأول من هذا العام مقارنة بالفترة نفسها من العام السابق يرى الخبراء أنه ستزداد الحاجة إلى بنية تحتية أكبر في الصين لتطوير صناعة الذكاء الاصطناعي ما سيجلب المزيد من الفرص في العام الماضي تجاوزت قيمة صناعة الذكاء الاصطناعي في البلاد الثمانين مليار دولار بزيادة 14% عن عام 2022 التقيت سابقا برئيس تنفيذي ومؤسس أسس صندوق سينوفيشن فنتشرز وهو مقره في الصين ويستثمر بشركات الذكاء الاصطناعي والديب تك أو التكنولوجيا العميقة وتحدث عن نية الصندوق بنقل بعض الشركات الناشئة الصينية العاملة بالذكاء الاصطناعي إلى المنطقة واستثمار مئات الملايين من الدولارات هنا خلال الثلاث إلى خمس سنوات المقبلة نتابع Sanovation Ventures was started 15 years ago, and we invest in deep technology companies, uh, for example, artificial intelligence, uh, robotics, uh, biosciences, and we manage over $3 billion in total assets. We actually start from early stage, uh, uh, typically incubation, angel, uh, but most of our investments are in uh, pre-A and series A. Mm -hmm. uh, typically about a $10 million investment per deal. Uh, and we also have a growth fund that will invest bigger checks for larger companies in growth stages. But everything is technology only. We only invest in deep technology. So I've witnessed uh, recently uh, innovation ventures in some of the headlines in the region. Um, do you have any investments in the region or do you plan to have any investments in the Middle East? Um, I think the Middle East has the commitment, the leadership, uh, the resources, and also highly connected uh, to the energy transition. So I'm very, very bullish in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. We haven't yet made any investments, but uh, we are looking closely. And we're also looking to move some of our technology companies so that they start a Middle East um, a subsidiary mm -hmm. or possibly even move the whole company. Uh, to the Middle East. I can see us spending tens of millions in the coming year, mm -hmm. um, but perhaps hundreds of millions in the next three to five years. Uh, but we're also uh, really taking our companies and moving them there, and that capital expenditure will be potentially even a larger amount because if Middle East market grows rapidly, uh, these companies uh, formerly Chinese companies or still Chinese companies, uh, with their business will blo uh, blossom and grow, and will be able to use um, uh, uh, use the capital to do Middle East expansion, mm -hmm. not necessarily finding a company in the Middle East per se. Uh, we'll do both. دكتور كيف لي هو مؤلف كتاب القوى العظمى للذكاء الاصطناعي الصين ووادي السيليكون والنظام العالمي الجديد هذا هي صورة الكتاب وكان لابد أن أسأله عن السباق بين أمريكا والصين ومن سيأتي في المرتبة الثالثة بعدهما فلنتابع Well US and China are still the strongest um, US has pulled farther ahead due to the reasons we discussed earlier, mm -hmm. but China is uh, still trailing as number two. Um, there are many other com countries um, that want to be number three. And I think some countries in the Middle East um, has a chance. And uh, I think it's going to require a major catch up, which means I think because this whole revolution requires so much GPU, I think if the Middle Eastern countries can acquire a lot of GPUs, and can bring in the core large language model technologies. And then on that basis, uh, let people develop applications and, and also evangelize to people that this is an app they should use. They should go direct to AI app and not stay with just normal mobile apps. If all these things are done, I think the Middle East uh, can emerge with one or two countries in the top 10. I think that's very feasible. Uh, one thing to be 
cautious about is that uh, the current critical mass and the um, uh, the concentration of talent is primarily in the U.S., secondarily in China. Uh, the Middle East doesn't currently have a lot. And I think it's important to bring that talent from U.S. and China over. And I think that will make all the difference. Dr. Lee, last question. You predicted it might take five to eight years to advance generative AI consumer applications. What does the next level look like? What do we expect? Uh, I think we'll see every app become AI enabled. Um, I think AI will create, will be able to read for us, write for us. AI will be able to um, search for content. But more important is uh, agentic technology. That is AI becoming our agent. So we can tell it what we want and it gets it done, not just to give us some more content back. So if I tell it my wife's birthday is coming up, it will directly, knowledgeably buy the right presents, flour or cakes for her, uh, saving me a lot of time, making her very happy. And it's not just giving you uh, question answering suggestions about what cake and flour to buy, but just do it for me. And when that happens for both business and, and, and pleasure, uh, I think we'll be relying on AI as an incredibly amplifier kind of an assistant. And it will, it will save a tremendous amount of time do tasks better than I can do, and it will create new business opportunities and disruptions uh, that are unimaginable.